Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. For our podcast, DwyerBoxingNews.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, in the comment section, in fact, in my favorites folder, on my YouTube channel page, I have the All Access episode from Showtime <clears throat> for the Remains to Vern Deontay Wilder fight. Right now, a few things leap out at you. <clears throat> Deontay Wilder is an enthusiastic young man who believes in himself and has an enthusiastic team around him. I love their enthusiasm. But understand, boxing is a grown man sport, right? Remains to Vern and his team look so much more focused. They look so much more mature. Stavern mentally looks so much more prepared for this fight that let's go where people are afraid to go. I would say that Remains to Vern is just more mentally prepared than Deontay Wilder. He's the older man. He comes across as older. You get the feeling that if the bullets start flying and he gets hit with very hard shots, and understand, this is a fight between Two of the hardest punchers in the entire sport of boxing. Understand, this is the big man's division. We're talking about the heavyweight division. Right? Both of these guys are going to get hit with bombs. I just get the feeling that when the bombs start landing, Remains to Vern's maturity is going to give him a decided advantage in this fight. Enthusiasm is nice. Maturity is better. Remains to Vern seems, seems to know what's at stake. He has faced more adversity in the ring. He's actually lost the fight. Right? He's been in fights where he's had to be on his back foot. I encourage you to look at the footage in the All Access video of Stavern's fights, plural, against Chris Ariola, a fighter I personally think is better than Deontay Wilder. Right? If I had a gun to my head and had to make a call on who I thought was going to win this fight, I'd go with Bermain Stavern. If I'm in a casino and I had to bet this fight based on current odds, I'd simply take both guys to win by KO. My logic being somebody is going to get knocked out in this fight. Right? Deontay Wilder has no experience professionally. Right? I'm not talking about sparring in some gym. I'm talking about in a professional fight. He has no experience dealing with the second half of a 12-round fight, right? All of his guys have fallen down early. He's never had a fight go the distance. He's never even had a fight go to the later rounds, right? He looks like an enthusiastic young man. I don't believe enthusiasm alone can get you through the last six rounds of a fight against a big puncher like Bermain Stefan. Right? Let's go one step further. And I know what I'm going to say is going to sound crazy and kooky and stuff like that. Okay, whatever. Right? Uh, won't be the first time here online I've uh, sounded crazy and kooky. Right? You know, there's some guys who, let's say you're playing basketball against them. Let's mix sports. And the first time you see the guy... The first few plays, oh man, the guy is nasty going to his left. Right? You're sticking him and the guy has the first step you can't figure out. And 
All you're seeing is the back of his head. The dude's blowing by you. You're thinking, my God. But then as the game goes along, you notice that the guy can only go to his left. You don't even have to think about the guy going to his right. Then you notice that the guy doesn't have a pull-up jumper. He has to try to drive to get by you. So then you realize that the guy's plan A, as big as it looks, is actually thin. And that the guy doesn't have a plan B. So then even though the guy you're sticking, the guy you're guarding, might be faster than you. Might have an eye-opening move that turns heads. Right? By about the third or fourth basket, you're not even wasting your time trying to prevent the guy from going to his right. You're over here. Right? You're not even wasting your time worried about whether the guy can take a step-back jumper because you know he can't. So you're in position. You're conserving energy. You're not moving around as much as you were at the start of the match. In fact, after a while, the guy looks average. Right? He doesn't have a game. He has a move. That's how I see Deontay Wilder. Big overhand right. Wow, does that drop jaws? I'll tell you what, it certainly drops opponents. Right? You see him hit Audley Harrison with a big overhand right. You see him hit Malik Scott. You would think these guys were shot. Right? They're dazed. They're confused. The world has changed. The fight's over. Right? Guys get stretched out on that big right hand up top. Where's the rest of the game? I've been accused here online of hating on Deontay Wilder. To the Deontay Wilder Nation. In the comment section to this video, tell us what I'm missing. Right? Let's make this about a fighter's skills. Other than that big right hand up top. Right? And I give him that. It's dramatic. It's effective. No one has made it to the second half of a fight against him. It's damn good. Other than that punch, what else does he have? Right? Deontay Wilder against Bermain Stavern. How do you know that Stavern isn't going to come in the ring just looking for that right hand up top he doesn't even have to worry about it to his body right think about it if all he has to do is look at one punch thrown at one angle can he handle that as good as that punch is can he handle that Right? Understands the Vern is the other side of the street from Wilder. You'll notice in the Areola fights that Stavern first of all is on his back foot. He's not on his front foot. You'll notice he's two handed. He's not a big right hand up top. He's two handed. You'll notice he's hitting Areola all over the place. Right? Not just head shots, but body shots. More importantly, you're going to notice. That while Ariola is bringing a lot of volume, aggression, right? While Ariola is bringing a lot of energy, I want you to just look at Bermain Stavern's face. Just look at his face. To quote the great Stuart Scott, he is as cool as the other side of the pillow right this is the guy who you know the bullets are flying the cops are coming the deal's gone bad he's in a back alley here's a group of guys and he's the calm guy who says fellas we need to get out of here right let me just say 
I think you have a more complete fighter with as big a punch as Deontay Wilder. Ember Mains to Ver. I believe he's two-handed. I believe he is reading an opponent. Right? I believe boxing is a lot like playing quarterback in the NFL, in a sense. Right? Some quarterbacks are getting by on athleticism. Other guys are actually reading defenses. Right? Bermain Stavern, in my opinion, can read an opponent. He's looking at you and he's figuring out what you're doing. When you make a mistake, he notices it. He sees you getting sloppy, your hands down here, you're not blocking shots on this side. He makes you pay for it. Right? I think it's significant that in the rematch against Ariola, he stops Ariola. The first time, he's figuring out the lay of the land. He wins that fight, by the way. Right? The second time, he knows the lay of the land. He's able to make things happen. So I view Deontay Wilder as on the clock from the opening bell. And I'm not alone. Right? Tyson Fury has talked about it. Right? Deontay Wilder has to close this show, land a home run ball, right? He needs to take out Bermain Stavern before Stavern figures out that he can't go anywhere to his left, right? That he's only a big right hand. That when he got Audley Harrison in trouble and he came in, he looked amateurish, right? He was excited. He started throwing a lot of hooks. Didn't look like he knew what he was doing. It looked like he was, as one analyst said, windmilling it, right? I don't view Deontay Wilder as a surgeon. I view him as a punch. Right? I think Remain Stavern takes this fight. The only suspense is going to be early as Stavern figures out the angles. Right? If Stavern is still there at the start of the fourth round, right? And if you see him blocking Deontay Wilder's big right hand, in my opinion, this fight is over, right? Likewise, if you see Stavern get inside on Wilder, now keep in mind, Wilder's 6'7", but he's thin. We overlook the thinness because he's a heavyweight, but he's thin at 6'7", right? If you see Stavern get inside and land some body punches on Wilder, what's the Wilder fight where he's even had to deal with stress to his body. If you see Stavern, who has vastly superior defense to Wilder, if you see Stavern come in and land body shots on Wilder, and if Wilder looks like he can't avoid getting hit in the body, in other words, you're watching it, guy gets hit in the body once, you say, okay, well, you know, lightning strikes once. You know, if you see lightning strike twice in the same spot, and if Wilder doesn't make the adjustments, and let me ask the question, in what fight has Wilder made the adjustments? Right? If Wilder doesn't make the defensive adjustments, you're looking at a short night. In other words, if you need to use the bathroom, don't get up. Right? Watch the rest of the fight. I'm telling you, Stavern hits as hard as Wilder. Right? So this is a grown man sport. I've used to Vern as the grown up in this one. Right? I've used to Vern as the more complete fighter in this one. Understand too, we could talk about a guy's 100% KO ratio all we want. Boxing's not a sports league. Right? I know when I'm watching NFL football that these NFL teams have to play the other good teams. In boxing, a guy could be going against high school competition, college competition. We'll be counting that as wins. 
You understand, right? Then the guy gets in a real NFL game against an NFL playoff team, and suddenly he's in over his head just like even these talented college quarterbacks are in over their heads when they step up to the NFL. Right? Wilder's great record to me tells me that he hasn't been fighting the right people. Right? I don't view Wilder's resume as that impressive. When I think about the great heavyweights of the United Kingdom, let's just say Audley Harrison's name doesn't spring to mind off the bat. Right? I'll say this. Malik Scott hitting the canvas. Uh, I saw that against Derek Chisora. You know what I'm saying. I mean, Malik Scott, talented fighter. I'm not here to diss him too much. But let's just say, you know, he's been down in other fights, right? Now Wilder is in against a big hitter who has beaten Chris Ariola twice, who stopped Ariola in the rematch. And Ariola is a two-handed fighter who can push the pace a lot more than Deontay Wilder, right? I think this is a big step up in class for Wilder. I don't think it's a big step up in class for Bermain Stavern. I like Stavern in this fight. If I were to pick a winner, it would be Stavern. Let me say, though, the way I'm going to play this at the casino is to take both guys by Kale. Why? Because I question Deontay Wilder's stamina. So I believe he's going to have to up the ante and make it all or nothing, a stoppage or nothing early on, right? Somebody's getting KO'd in this fight. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.